So yeah, we were we were just looking into um, this interesting thing about you, which is you're obviously an ardent team team sportswoman, but it didn't start in team sports. It started for you in tennis. Um, so tell us, just tell us about your background there, how you got into it, and why you took the path that you did to to go the other direction. Sure. Um, so it started in tennis because um, basically from a young age, I, I've got a, a super sports mad dad. Um, and like a lot of kids, you uh, you just follow what you what you see in front of you. And um, he played a lot of tennis uh, and a lot of hockey, to be fair. Um, but tennis wise was something, maybe it was just something that I picked up initially. Um, but, but really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it from a young age. Um, I had a good little little group um that I played with um and if I'm honest it turns out I was reasonably okay at it and did relatively well so kept sort of going down that path um however it did get to a bit of a point um where mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't love it I didn't uh, at the start it had been really fun and then like a lot of things if you turn out to be okay at them or quite good then you have to things become more serious and you have to do a lot more things and for me tennis was yes like you said very individual um it's all on you it's um it's a totally different mindset and everything I loved about it at the start which predominantly was playing with your mates um when I was very little wasn't there anymore and it was um I think relatively clear from because I had been relatively successful at tennis um uh, you know at the super junior level um I'd done quite a lot of sort of national stuff but I, I can't tell you how much I didn't enjoy it um and then it was uh, weirdly at that sort of stage I was also then moving into um hockey at school mm -hmm. um and it was like wow this is something I really like <laughs> and almost the, the the difference between the two and although I definitely was better and having more success in in the tennis arena at the time there is definitely only so far you can go if I mean mentally basically on my own I, I didn't have the, the ability strength whatever the word is to um carry on with tennis and hockey was was something that was totally fun um still something that I wanted to work hard at so still and still got a lot of the same enjoyment with regards to success, competing, competition, but I got to do it alongside other people. And I didn't get the same enjoyment out of a, even a win or a success if it was just for me. And to do that, to win or lose with other people was better for me. Um, and therefore to work hard towards something with other people was just something that was so much easier more natural um for me so i don't know it almost then wasn't a choice anymore because i think one direction i was always going to be hitting a wall um the tennis route i just i just was going to struggle to ever get over that because i just you just if you don't really want it to win as well you know which is a weird concept to me to say <laughs> but you just didn't have that feeling because yeah I, I, I just didn't have that feeling in, in that sport. And then I, I so did in hockey with teammates that it was pretty evident that that was going to have more, um, well, a nicer outcome for me just as a person, but also more successful because you're going to put more hours, you're going to work harder. And yeah, that was, that's the transition. Really. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it just illustrates such an important point about, junior sport in general but especially at the elite level that as soon as that actually enjoyment is the primary needs to be the primary performance goal of junior sport still I think you're so many so so many I mean I certainly knew a few at school um at quite a like specialist rugby rugby school that would have gone on to great things had they enjoyed it more mm. um it's that incentive structure and, and what you said there was so interesting that 
the outcome became irrelevant too with the enjoyment mm. as the enjoyment decreased you were kind of less bothered about winning and losing which for a competitive person is is kind of a crazy wake-up call isn't it um mm. but yeah that's it's super interesting and i think i mean good for you right realizing saying like you know i prefer that to, at and presumably not very old age to be mature enough i know like hey, like I, 13 yeah hey i i'm better at this i prefer this you know i might be more successful in in tennis potentially because uh, mm. i'm further down the route but actually I'll, I'll switch over and change and that's um that's, and it's quite a big life skill isn't it to yeah kind of experience because it's yeah. really like the level you probably got to in in tennis is that's rare for a for most junior people to get to in any in anything mm. or even adults but then to realize like what you intrinsically are more drawn to with the team aspect pretty cool yeah it's the the only thing i would add as well because i i've spoken once to, to a friend my parents friend about this but um because it's very difficult for a parent as well so you've got the kid aspect because they're so young and the parent aspect because it is hard and I have almost almost done the same thing where I was watching a kid um back back at a club play this was playing hockey um and they were super talented you know when you just see like natural skill or whatever um but it's very hard if you see someone that's very good at something and I was sorry I was chatting to the parent of this kid um and she was chatting about um the difficulties because not knowing which is more important for their for their kid to do because this kid was super talented but they were very talented at other things too um and I can imagine that as a parent it's also hard if you want to guide not not that you want to push them necessarily but and lots of parents want to help their children um and it's difficult to know if if your kid is good at one thing um or better at something should that be the route they go down or is it something else um so I haven't necessarily got the answer here, but I think it is definitely a combination of understanding or trying to help your child understand what inherently they enjoy is definitely the right the, the right word, but it's not just enjoy, it's like enjoy and have desire to to work hard at. Yeah. yeah. Satisfaction. Very, yes. I in fact that's probably as good a word because enjoyment can also be like, oh, it's, this is really fun and you know frivolous yeah. um so it's, it's a fine line between enjoy passion and satisfaction and like is it is it something that they're passionate about that they want to drive towards and some people will get that for individual sports again I've, I've there was another kid when I was playing tennis and I think this was it made it really clear to me so she had this like innate desire or drive to just be on her own and I remember being like this is weird <laughs> I mean obviously not weird that's that's totally up to her but like yeah. I was so far from that and she was someone that I would hit with a lot you know and I thought wow it I, I'm never gonna have or I didn't feel I was ever gonna have that so she was always going to be ahead of me on hours spent or our you know balls hit whatever the thing is because I was like wow I just don't have that that extra bit and um so I think if as a parent or as a child, you're able to realise what they, what the person has that in, that's quite a good um, direction or yeah. piece of what advice. Definitely. I mean, I think, again, I think it's pretty phenomenal for at that point to be as self-aware as that. And it probably <laughs> explains a lot about how you were able to pick up another sport and not pick it up, but, you know, just transition over yeah. in, into it because fundamentally all mental skills start with self-awareness. They start with that ability to go, okay, re I'm looking at that and realizing I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna match that. And it, whether it's like in just the way I feel or the passion or whatever, but also having the conviction to act on that, mm. you know, and, say, and saying like, you know, but I think that's, that's it's a difficult one, but I definitely think that we're, we're kind of nipping at the edges of work on what you're, do stuff that play to your strengths right because strengths yeah. 
are inherently the things that you you enjoy doing um, yeah that you'll probably get better at by doing it more quickly than other people because you're engaged in it and I I think enjoyment is a key part of that um you know fundamentally if, if you're not going to enjoy what you're doing I'm sure all parents would say that's that's where they would draw the line as well right with some, yeah. well I want you to enjoy it as like the bottom threshold but actually there's so much more to that enjoyment in the sense that it'll generate momentum in your performance and how many how many hours you're going to put in as you said and mm. all that really interesting stuff but i think it's i think it's such an interesting thing at such a young age to to do that um so let's take it 